Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. I'm a Star Trek fan from the first of the series on through all of the sequels and including the prequel and all the movies that went along with it. The other night I was watching a rerun and it was a touching story on Next Generation, I think called Inner Sight. And it was a good story, but more than that, it also had a probe in it that then I felt I just had to make it. So this probe is inspired by that Star Trek. It has cones on either side, off center, and then a decorative plug here using the infinite axis chuck covering the hole in the, from the mortise. So let's make this probe out of Star Trek. The first element of this project is a cone from cedar. I've mounted a piece between centers and roughed it round. Then I'm parting the wood for the bottom tenon. This tenon will be one inch diameter and long enough for my long nose jaws to grip it. At this diameter, I think it pays to use long tenons. I'll cut it off when I assemble the final project. With that tenon done, I'm moving to the other end and marking 6 inches from the base. Then I'm parting to mark my place before wasting away most of the excess. With the top and bottom marked, I can start forming the cone. This cedar is soft enough that peel cuts with a skew work very nicely. I peel with the skew almost at a tangent to the work, then arc toward the center, taking little bits at a time. With most of the wood removed, I can take a slicing cut with the skew that leaves the wood nice and smooth. Then I'm switching the cedar over to my long nose jaws in the chuck. In the chuck, I can finish the very top on the lathe. I want perfect cones, so I'm sanding first with my 80 grit sanding board to remove any remaining waves. Then hand sand up through the grits and apply brushing lacquer to the cone. Then wipe off the excess lacquer. I cut the second cone using the same process. However, this time I stopped to burn the word family onto the tenon. The Star Trek clip centered around a family experience to represent that world's people. I believe families can be eternal and are worth strengthening as a source of long-term joy despite short-term heartache. Once I experience some of the heartache, I can appreciate the happiness and joy with my family. The midsection is more complicated. In design, I contemplated drilling from opposite sides, but with a high risk of misaligning the two cones. I decided to drill both holes from the same side and put a decorative cap opposite the cone. So now, the wood is mounted to a faceplate with double stick tape. I'm smoothing one side of the midsection, sanding it, and applying lacquer to the one side. Now for the critical part of the creation. I created a drilling pattern noting the center and the center of both tenons. This is glued to the rough side of my cedar. Then while aligning the tailstock to one of the tenons, I'm mounting this wood to the faceplate with double stick tape and hot melt glue for insurance. Then drill a one inch hole clear through the wood for the tenon. With one hole done, I'm prying off the wood from the faceplate, cleaning up the faceplate from the hot melt glue, then aligning the live center to the second tenon center, and again press the wood against the faceplate with double stick tape and hot melt glue. Then drill the other one inch hole clear through the wood for the tenon. Finally, I'm remounting the wood to the center mark, again with double stick tape and hot melt glue. Now I need to clean up this surface and form a cove on the perimeter edge. 
I'll sand this section, then sign before applying lacquer to the remaining surfaces. I have a lot of small paddock rounds from my pumpkin project. This is a perfect opportunity to use one. I'm mounting it to the face of the long nose jaws with double stick tape and live center pressure. While mounted here, I'm cutting a tenon on both sides, being careful between the wood and the jaws. Then, with a parting tool, part the wood in half. Before moving on, I'm cleaning up the surface and edge of both pieces. Then sand them up through the grits, but not applying lacquer at this time. This is the background of the features I'll cut with the infinite access chuck. Now is my best chance to smooth out the background. Now with the infinite access chuck, I'm modifying the work pedestal surface by drilling a shallow mortise to fit the tenons on the paddock work pieces. I feel this will give me a measure of security later when turning. Then fasten the first piece with double stick tape and tailstock pressure. Then position the chuck for the first feature. With a sharp small gouge, I'm cutting in this feature, then gently sand the fresh wood. Now reposition the chuck for the second feature. The live center points to the center of the feature. Again, with a sharp small gouge, I cut a different shape and sand. Then mount the second piece. This will have three features. Why? Because I feel like three on this one. Then assemble the cones to the middle section after trimming the tenons. Then the tenons on the paddock features fit opposite the cones. They'll provide some outer space features to my alien probe. So where do project ideas come from? Anywhere. Anything you see as interesting may be adapted to a neat wood turning project. I like my alien probe and the message it brings to my memory. That's all for the Friendly Alien Probe. We'll see you again next week for another wood turning video. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and tell your friends. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough protection. Until next week, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. Let's keep turning.